Well, hello there. Welcome back to another episode of The Insect Nerd, where we talk about things like insects, and the name. We talk about exotic animals like white tree frogs, Neville and Luna, and lovely pharaoh, and also other inverts that I keep. Um, yeah, so just a range of things, really. Um, if you haven't seen me before, I'm new to YouTube, newish. I've been sort of on and off uh, dealing with some stuff, but uh, you know, everybody is in life so you know i'm not i don't really film weekly i try and film monthly if i can um you know if not i do apologize but i just film as often as i can um for you guys but i'd like to do it more because i do really enjoy it um and i like i'd love to share my passion of insects and i'd like you to share your passion of insects with me as well because insects are fantastic mine just jumped away just a second so today we are going to talk about um, a very, very interesting species or a very interesting insect who keeps jumping around. So if I do have to get it, I do apologise, but that's just the nature of the insect. So today we are talking about this lovely, beautiful, lovely lady here. This one's female. It's a horse-headed grasshopper. So it looks a lot like a stick insect. Um, because it's quite sort of, you know, it's long, it's got a long body, but those big legs there identify it. You can help, you know, it help, helps you identify it as a grasshopper, which is from the order of Orthopetra. So Orthopetra are grasshoppers, crickets, locusts, all those sort of things. Um, that order is split into two suborders, but I can't remember the name of them at the top of my head. Uh, nerves. Um, but we'll go into that another time. They're not phasmids, so phasmids are stick insects and leaf insects. Again, this will probably be in another video, which I, I keep meaning to do, but I keep going, oh, this will make a good video, that will make a good video. And then I don't do the videos that I want to do, well, or should be doing, or, well, you know what I mean, I, the ones I planned. Um, so these guys are gorgeous, really easy to take care of. Uh, this will be a very simple video. I will go into a setup, setup video another time. So... These guys are originally from Peru. This one is female, as we've said. It's about 15 centimetres long. Wow, huge, huge. Yeah, big mama. It just pooped. <laughs> um, the males are half the size, around half the size, um, and a lot more slender. I don't have any males for comparison. I'm so sorry, I only have two females. Um, yeah, so I do apologise, but these these are very easy to look after, very easy to care for. Um, I've had them for like what almost a year now, um, you know, and yeah, they're just very simple. <laughs> not simple-minded. No, you're not simple-minded. You're very intelligent. Yes, you are. Um, but care-wise, so enclosure. Um, it's not the tank behind me, by the way. That's my insect, my beetle tank, and the light's gone out, so as usual. Something always has to go wrong, <laughs> so that light is out, and that's why I normally it's out, because the bulb went out, but they don't necessarily really need it, especially in this heat and hot weather. But yeah, we focus on this. <laughs> um, so I keep them in a net. Um, I won't show you the net, because it's on the other half of the room and it's not in focus but i will take a photo of it and put it sort of where my arm is um so you know you can see what the enclosure looks like um and you know i will do a setup video as i said but basically i do kitchen roll at the bottom for substrate in the net um i keep keep them in a nice tall net because shedding if they shed into a too close environment they will get injured they can lose limbs just like stick insects and leaf insects well like plasmids i guess just say that um yes so i keep them in sort of a nice sort of nice net with sort of some ventilation loads of ventilation in the net um kitchen roll easy to clean um the poo clean it about clean it weekly um yeah i mean maybe i clean it more frequently than because i've got i keep sorry tongue tied it's so hot i'm doing this video and it's just so hot um <laughs> yeah it's you know, I, I say I clean it maybe twice a week because I'm keeping um, different types of stick insects in there, which poo a lot more than these guys. So yeah, twice a week, uh, which is not too bad. It's just easy cleaning. Take the kitchen roll out, 
uh, make sure the leaf insects and stick insects are put into another net while I'm cleaning it out and it literally takes 10-15 minutes um, just rapid and fast. Um, food plants, so diet, these guys eat bramble, rose and oak, uh, similar to my stick insects so that's really handy that's why I keep them with uh, my jungle nymphs. My jungle nymphs are small, they're not adults at the moment, when they are adults I will move them when they get bigger, they are starting to get bigger. Um, I also keep them with my um, two diaphragm gigantic females, my last ones, um, they're on their last legs, but they're doing really well. I love them, I also recommend them. So as long as they've got the same food plant, they can be kept with species of stick insects. Um, yeah, so just make sure they've got their food plants and make sure maybe don't keep as big, don't keep, yeah, oh, sorry, I forgot what I was gonna say, I don't think I was gonna say anything relevant <laughs> um but yeah really easy you know obviously food plants again just like with stick insects and leaf insects make sure everything is washed thoroughly through to avoid pets you know getting onto these guys and, and you know biting into them um and also um to get rid of the pet you know sort of make sure the pesticides are washed off i would even do it with hot water as well um because hot water is probably a bit better and then maybe so with cold water so obviously you're not you know the water doesn't boil your stick insects and leaf insects and your grasshoppers um but yeah these guys are so nice to watch as well um when they were little they'd sort of when they were nymphs they'd sort of jump on the diaphragm gigantia and the diaphragm gigantia would give them like a little piggyback i know right and the diaphragm gigantia wouldn't be bothered about it like you know it's quite hilarious <laughs> but they get on really well um food plant pot plants just bear in mind not to like leave holes because otherwise they can fall in and drown. Um, I mean, this one's a bit bigger now, so drowning would be less of an issue. Um, but I co I cover like all the holes anyway because I don't want any of them drowning. And I have a few stick insect nymphs living in the net too. So I always want to make sure that everything is baby proof anyway. And just, you know, you want to make sure your insect doesn't drown. So might as well just block all the holes and, you know, I wrap a bit of tissue around the, the bottom, the sort of, bottom of the bottom of the plants of the food plants where the food plants go in um so no one falls in the holes it doesn't take long but yeah i'll show you a setup video another time this was just sort of a quick video to to show you this wonderful creature um and and just and just sort of yeah um just show you how wonderful this lovely creature is um also just, just to say um i've updated my website so I have got a millipede video in there if you're interested in wanting to take care of millipedes. There's also a video on here too and there's other links because um, I've had a lot of questions about beetles, um, beetle larvae care and stuff. I'm, I'm happy to answer questions but if you want to find more direct information it's on my website www.theinsectnerd.co.uk um, If you want to follow my insects, um, DM me, ask me questions, I'm always happy to help. Um, go to um, follow me at the insect nerd 97 I'm also on um, TikTok. I don't do much of it on there, but I want to try and do more. Um, it's quite funny. It's quite entertaining. Um, follow me at the. Oh no, I think it's just. I think I'm just the insect nerd on there. But I'll put all the links on there for you, so don't worry about it. But thank you so much for watching. And honestly, such an easy insect to look after. Um, the rating I would say for this is probably. One being really easy, ten being really tricky, I would say just one. <laughs> really, really easy. You know, if you don't want a stick insect or if you had loads of stick insects and you know, I love stick insects though, you know. <laughs> but if you if you um feel, you know, you want something a bit different, because you know, you do. <laughs> That's why I've got loads of loads of different stick insects in my house, because I want other species and you know, to learn about them. Then these guys, if you're sort of starting out, um, then I do recommend these guys. Just be aware they do jump. So be very fast with your handling. Or if not, just try and be aware where they jump. Yeah. Anyway, thank you so much for watching and, and have a nice day in this lovely heat we're having. <laughs>